Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Robert is here with me for this video because this is a travel vlog. So this is going to continue our summer vacation series where we filmed a vlog for every day of our summer vacation and we're just sharing them gradually with you here on the channel. And for this video, we mostly filmed clips of what we did without a whole lot of commentary just because of the nature of where we were with the crowds, the heat and the noise. So yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, and just to comment on the structure of this video, we leave our hotel, we go to Islands of Adventure, to that part of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, take the Hogwarts Express over to Universal Studios, then leave to the rest of our vacation in Miami. It is like 8 o'clock. I just put sunscreen on and Robert and I are about to have some quick breakfast and then head down towards Universal. I thought I would do a really quick hotel room tour though. So bathroom, super nice and clean, which I really appreciate. And then just two beds. <laughs> So yeah, pretty, pretty basic, but still pretty nice. So we decided to have breakfast at the hotel because that made the most sense for our really busy day that we had planned. And Robert had the potatoes and sausage and I had just plain cornflakes with milk and some apple juice. And we both found our individual breakfast delicious. And then, sausage was a little burnt. It did look a little burnt, honestly. And then we got in the car and we drove straight to Universal Studios. So, we just got to Universal. I'm still very sleepy, but it's like nine o'clock and we're gonna go check in. So Universal owns Marvel? No, Disney owns Marvel, but Universal had the rights to all the Marvel characters for theme parks. It's like the 80s. So when we first got to Universal, after we parked and everything, we got some waters because it was already really, really hot and we were really thirsty already. So we got some waters and then Robert did a roller coaster. So we proceeded directly to the Marvel Superhero Island. And Robert did the Hulk roller coaster, which I would never have done in a million years because of how intense it both looked and apparently according to Robert was. Yeah, it was actually really, really intense. A lot of G-forces had a launch start. I guess it's to simulate the Hulk throwing you. Somehow Linnea managed to film the track every time there wasn't a roller coaster car on the track. I find amusing, but I mean, it was a good time. I tried to get Linnea on it, but it was probably for the best that she chickened out. Yeah, it was definitely for the best that I chickened out, because if I get on a roller coaster and I don't like it, I get really angry that I can't like get off, and that I keep having to like go through all the loops and stuff. It would just would have been really upsetting. So I'm glad I did not do it, and that only Robert did it. And then after that, we went to Spider-Man. And we should have gotten on Spider-Man fast, but it kind of broke down. But what did you think about Spider-Man? I think Spider-Man was my favorite ride that we went on at Universal. It was really thrilling, but it wasn't too thrilling. And it had a really great storyline. Basically the idea was you were supposed to be like in a, like a news reporting bus and you were supposed to be like helping Spider-Man. You were working with the Daily Bugle to like get reports of what was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like you would see Spider-Man like fighting all the different villains the and- Sinister Six. The Sinister Six, yeah. So like the Sandman and like Dr. Octopus and the car would like kind of worry you around, but like it was never anything too jarring. And there was like a heat element at some point and it was just fun. I liked it, very engaging. Spider-Man was all right, but I had to close my eyes for the last like third of it because it got too intense best ride at Universal, and I think it was the ride that I definitely enjoyed the most of all the rides that we did. So after we wrapped up at Marvel Superhero Island, we went through the Cartoon Land area, saw a bunch of classic cartoons, we saw some Betty Boop, we saw some Popeye. We didn't want to ride any of those rides because they're allegedly, they're like the wettest theme park rides to ever exist. And Linnea has this thing about getting wet. Well, also we had a bunch of like camera equipment and stuff too. So we didn't want like our stuff to get wet and ruined. So we then proceeded to the Jurassic Park area. We didn't do um, the King Kong ride because I'm not a fan of uh, 4D movies with like spiders and stuff. And then we subsequently made it to Jurassic Park River Adventure. So I mean I had fun. I mean it was fun until the big drop and then I was not as fun anymore. I mean you, know, you were not enjoying it as soon as they turned off and all the dinosaurs came out. I just wanted a leisurely boat ride and it was like a roller coaster in disguise so I wasn't thrilled about that. No. After Jurassic River Adventure we subsequently tried to go to the younger children's area of that section to ride the Pterodon Flyers roller coaster and we were turned away because we didn't have a child. So we promptly decided to go to the Velocicoaster and you'll see what happened. So the Velocicoaster is broken I guess so that's a bummer. That is a bummer. The jungle parted way to rural England and we entered the Hogsmeade area of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, we 
didn't really film much here, but we did ride the Harry Potter Forbidden Journey Hogwarts experience. Oh, we did. That entire ride, I had my eyes closed. It was just way too intense for me. People rave about that ride. Because I mean, it's, it is probably the best ride there. It's fantastic. It feels very realistic to like riding a broomstick and like being in that world. But to me, it was too scary. My eyes were closed the entire time. And that was the last ride that I rode at Universal, I believe. I think I was done after that. I was like, no, it's too much. After Harry Potter Forbidden Journey, we took the Hogwarts Express between parks over to the main Universal Studios and spent some time in Diagon Alley, which is, you know, the main area from the first Harry Potter movie behind the bar where Hagrid opens up the street. It was a really good time. I got some butterbeer. Linnea got a lemonade type drink and we'll just let her explain. It's your Robert. Yeah. I didn't like the butterbeer at all. And the lemonade, I wish it was just normal lemonade. But I'm gonna drink it anyway. After we got the drinks, I decided to go on the Harry Potter Escape from Gringotts ride. And Linnea decided to just kind of chill and look around until I got off. Yeah, so I just walked around. I did really enjoy how realistic everything was. It really felt like you were in Diagon Alley. And I have not watched all the Harry Potter movies, but I've watched the first three a number of times. It felt very realistic. And then when I was waiting for Robert to be done with the ride, I did walk around a little bit. They have a couple of candy stores you can go in. So I walked in those places. I went into a couple other like little places that have like a, a wand shop you can look in. So I looked into those places. After leaving the Harry Potter area, we decided whether or not we were gonna do Men in Black or go to the Simpsons area. That the Simpsons area was super extensive. They built out all of the main things that you see on the main strip in the Simpsons. And I would know because my family and I were huge Simpsons fans. So I grew up with it. And I was just like, wow. They invested so much into making this look exactly like all the things in The Simpsons, and I was kind of amazed by it. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so we started heading to the front of the park where we saw the last roller coaster of the day that I rode. Seriously? Yeah. This one pulls you up, I guess, vertically, which is less interesting. Hey, it's Optimus Prime. Head to the next facility for your training. They're all gonna start screaming in a second. While I was on my last roller coaster ride of the day, which broke down and kept me in line way longer than I expected to be, Linnea was on her quest to find more shade. So in front of the roller coaster that Robert was on, there was this huge like area that had like fake grass and it was right in direct sunlight. It was not a good place to sit, but there was nowhere that didn't have direct sunlight. So I sat down there for a while until I got way too hot. So then I ended up going into a restaurant and I was actually pretty hungry. So I got like an oatmeal bowl with like cold oatmeal. That's like an overnight bowl thing you can get. So I got that, it was good. And then I had some water and then I just sat in there for as long as I could to stay cool. But eventually like I just got tired of sitting in there and so I ended up sitting on a bench like that was made of like stone again in direct sunlight I was super super hot and I ended up just like waiting for Robert to be done with his ride counting the minutes until he came back because I was just like melting so hot on this thing and because of the breakdown he was there for a long time it just wasn't as good as Disney in terms of accessibility at all. You had to have a lot of toughness, I felt like, to really enjoy Universal. Yeah, it's a much narrower target demographic. Like aside from like the lack of places to rest, the rides themselves were definitely tailored to people who could handle a lot of stimulation, a lot of movement, a lot of like flashing lights and different sensory experiences like at once. So I just felt like it was very targeted towards like someone who is fit and healthy, kind of mid in terms of age. We really didn't see that many young kids there except for like in the Looney Tunes section or like the sections that were really narrowly like targeted at kids. But again, it was like kids who were not like babies in strollers and stuff like that. It was like older kids. And then we really didn't see that many older people. We saw a couple here and there, but it just didn't really seem friendly to people who weren't super fit and healthy and excited about being scared. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, I think they have probably some of the most thrilling rides of any theme park, but you know, it's definitely not the most accessible or well-polished theme park experience. And afterwards, we drove down to the Lord Belfort Hotel on Miami Beach. But just to finish the day, we did get some drinks there, and you'll see a clip of that. 